Hi, this is Brian Tarbert with TCS, and today we're going to be doing a user review of the Ubiquistat. Uh, TCS has four Ubiquistat models. Today we'll be using the US 4050, which is our top of the line model, can do up to six stages of heating and cooling, and has also two analog outputs that can be used for chilled water, hot water valves, zone dampers, economizers, that type of thing. So when you first uh, uh, power up your Ubiquistat, you're going to you're gonna go through our startup wizard. And to do that, we just hit the next button here, and it gives you some information. So here we've got either Fahrenheit or, Cel Fahrenheit or Celsius, either a 12 or a 24 hour time clock, and we can set the backlight to low, medium, or high. On the next screen is where we can set up the date, and it's very simple just to change the, the uh, days of the, the, the day, the month, and the year, as you see, using the up and down hours, arrows, and the same thing on the uh, uh, hours and minutes. Now, if I set that to 24 hour, this would be in military time, so it would say 1752. Uh, the next screen lets you select either as a conventional or a heat pump thermostat. Now, if it's a heat pump, then we'll be able to uh, use the reversing valve. The BO terminal will be used as a reversing valve to control the reversing valve on a heat pump. If we leave it in conventional, that same output, the BO output, can now be used for a third or fourth stage of heat or cool. Um, the system mode can be in auto heat, cool, off, or off plus fan recirc. I'll talk about that in just one second. So we're going to leave that in the auto mode. And then here's where we can set up the fan in auto, on, cool, or auto plus recirc. Now setting it in auto plus recirc gives me the ability to uh, let the fan run for a minimum amount of time to achieve the, whatever air recirculation requirements are for that zone. So if, for example, if the building engineer has determined that you need to run the fan at least 40 minutes out of every hour, by putting it in auto plus recirc, we can program this so that if the fan does not go on for at least 40 minutes within a one hour period, based on calls for heating or cooling, it will go on for those remaining minutes at the end of that time period, typically an hour. Uh, the communication mode is either TCS bus, which is our standard uh, protocol that we've used for years, or BACnet MSTP. We'll just go ahead and leave that in BACnet MSTP. And then we can set up the address, which we can just going to address this as address 1. And next will give you the baud rate. Now, since I chose BACnet MSTP, uh, the Ubiquistat defaults to what we recommend as the lowest uh, baud rate for BACnet. Now, if I set this at TCS bus, I could go all the way down to 9600 uh, because on the TCS bus, we only send change. So the network is a lot less active and a little more forgiving than it might be on BACnet. And we can set this as high as 15. Uh, 115 200 so we'll go ahead and leave that at 38 uh, 400 and then this gives us a device number what this does is just combines the uh, backnet uh, manufacturing number that was assigned to us with the address that I just gave to it and that gets us right here into the main monitoring screen so a couple things I'll point out here on the main monitoring screen first of all the ubiquistat logo in the upper left hand corner that can be changed uh, there are no markings on the outside of the Ubiquistat, so if you want to OEM this product or put your own logo in there, uh, for example, you can do that via software or we can do that in the factory for you if you order a minimum uh, requirement. Up here in the right-hand corner where it says Ubiquistat, that can also be changed in software so that you can rename this instead of Ubiquistat, you could rename it, for example, RTU1 Lobby or something like that. Uh, here's where it shows you what, what is actually on or off. By it, right now it's in the unoccupied mode, so I'm just going to change that to the occupied mode. I can see that the fan is off, so by touching that icon, I can see what the condition of the fan currently is and what mode it's in, how it's programmed. And that would be the same if we were in heating or cooling, I'd be able to do that with those icons as well. Um, now, uh, this displays the room temperature, and by clicking on that, I can see what the set points are. Now to change the set points, if I want to do a temporary change, I can do that by hitting, clicking here, and I can control the number of degrees I allow uh, the user to have in the programming as well, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Uh, so right now, because I lowered the set point, the cooling went on as you can see, and again by clicking on that, I can see the system is cooling and the mode is set to auto. All right, so a uh, couple other things then uh, on these screens is the about screen so on that you can see uh, how the ubiquistat is set up what the model is the serial number device id firmware version all that is on there as well as our 800 number 
the status screen gives me three different screens, system, advanced, and network. On the system screen, I can see what the current set points are, if it's what state it's in, what the next schedule is, what the current schedule is, what inputs I've, I've currently mapped to the device, and what the relays are doing. The advanced screen will show me uh, what the, the type of mode it is. It's conventional. The fan is, an, uh, is programmed for auto plus research. I can see if I've got any digital inputs hooked up, what they're doing, what my analog inputs and outputs are in uh, position, and what, whether my econ economizer is active or not. And in network, I can see RS-45 activity. This really helps you be able to diagnose whether there's issues with the network uh, and then what mode it's in. And you can see it's backed in MSTP and what the baud rate is as well. Now we'll go back to the home screen and the next thing we'll look is the settings. So by clicking on the settings it gives me the basic settings first. So we've got fan mode, uh, system mode, Now we've looked at both of those in the setup screens so we won't spend a lot of time there. Set points however we can look at here. So we can see that there's up to four occupied set point groups and one unoccupied set point groups. Now those of you familiar with BACnet, these are also schedule objects, so you'll be able to schedule to those uh, objects as well. Uh, so if I want to change, for example, occupied set point group A, I just click on that and I change it down right here. So I can raise that, for example, and lower that. Now if I try to lower the cooling set point down too low, you'll notice that the heat set point will change as well, so it'll always maintain at least a one degree dead band between the two. So we'll go ahead and change that up to those set points and save that, and I can see that now my, occup uh, my occupied set points are changed. Unoccupied, we'll just lower that to 58 and raise that to 82, and there we go. Now we've got that set up for a little bit more uh, energy savings. We hit the back button, and then we get to the date and time, which we've already looked at. Uh, and the next thing we'll look at is scheduling. So on the scheduling, we've got up to eight different scheduling changes that we can make uh, per day. Now the Ubiquistat is programmed from the factory with a basic schedule of going using the occupied A set points at 8 o'clock and then at 5 o'clock using the unoccupied set point group. So that's just the default that we set up and again you can see there's up to eight different schedule changes that we can do. So let's say that we want to edit this schedule so we'll click the edit button. Now we can choose any day of the week that we want to or we can just choose all the weekdays, just weekends only, all, and we can select on and off. So in this case, we're going to select the weekdays. We click Next, and we're going to go to this first uh, setting. So we want to change that to 7 o'clock in the morning. So we change it there, and we still want to use that uh, Schedule A set point group. Now let's say that we look at that and go, you know what, I need that to be a little different. I can just uh, highlight that and then edit a set point group and go, you know what, I need that to be 69 and 73, so I'll save that. I don't have to go back to the previous screen I showed you. I can do it right from this screen. So we're going, ahead and, going to go ahead and save that by clicking Done, and we want to extend these hours to 6 p.m. and use the unoccupied set point group. Okay, so now we've got our uh, Monday through Friday schedule done, but we want to add some time on Saturday. So we're going to go ahead and click Edit. We're going to select Saturday. And next, we're going to uh, add a new set point. We're going to have this start at, uh, we'll say, 9 a.m. And we're going to use the A set point group. And that's done. And then we're going to add another one for 2 p.m. And we'll use the unoccupied set point group at 2 p.m. And we're done there. So now I'll save that, and now I've got my Monday through Friday schedule and my Saturday schedule. Now what the Ubiquistat does by default is at midnight it uses the unoccupied set point group until the first start time. So in this particular case, Monday through Friday, it will use the unoccupied set point group until 7 a.m. we will start to use the Schedule A set point group, and then at 6 p.m. goes to the unoccupied set point group. If you don't put anything here like I didn't on Sunday, it will just use the unoccupied set point group all day long because from midnight to midnight of the next day, there's no changes in the schedule. So it'll just use the unoccupied set point group. All right, so that's the scheduling. Now we'll go through some of the advanced features. Uh, let's look at a few things here. So on the analog outputs, very easy to configure those. So I just want to configure analog output one, for example, to be the economizer. I'm going to use it in the direct uh, action and 0 to 20 million because I want to use this for a 
motor that takes a 0 to 10 volt uh, uh, signal. So I, I program this as a 0 to 20 milliamp output, and then all I need to do to convert that to voltage is put a 500 ohm resistor, which comes with the ubiquistat, across the analog input and ground right inside the terminal blocks on the ubiquistat. So we'll go ahead and save that. And very simple programming there. Now the room temperature source, you've got the option of using the internal sensor, a remote sensor, or the average of both the internal and the remote. So what I'll do here is I'll select that, and then I can weight these differently. So for example, if I want to weight the internal sensor heavier than the remote sensor, I can do that, and as you see, then the average temperature changes more toward the internal sensor. Um, so this lets you mount the ubiquistat on one side of a room. Let's say you have a large room like a lobby, and you want to put another sensor over on the other side and average both. It allows you to do that with just a single remote sensor and utilize the onboard uh, uh, sensor to, to uh, use for averaging as well. Uh, temp calibration. This is a nice feature in the ubiquistat. So for example, if I want discharge air, I can, I can do this and I measure that I've got a long, uh, a long wire run which is leading to extra resistance. So I need to calibrate this down a couple of degrees. So right here, I just pull it, pull it up and I put that down. It goes down by tenths of a degree. And here I can see that it now will read 141.7. The uncalibrated value is right there and shows me how much I've offset it. So it gives you all the information you need if you ever need to go back to this again. So I'll go ahead and save that. And that's how you do calibration on all of the four temperature inputs. Uh, we'll go to the next screen. This is where you can set everything back to factory defaults. And this is where you can program an access code. For, so for example, let's say I want to program the access code. One, two, three, four, and we enter it again. And I click OK. Now if I go back to the home screen and I try to do anything other than raise or lower the set points, uh, it's going to ask me for that access code. So that really locks people out from doing anything other than raising or lower the, the set points that you've given them the ability to do. Go back to the advanced screen here, uh, screen two. And we then have the system test mode. This is a nice feature we put in the ubiquistat. What this does when you click on this, it takes it out of its control logic and lets you manually control the, input, the outputs of the thermostat. So for example here, if I just want to te test the fan, I can just turn that on or off. If I want to test uh, the heat one, it'll automatically turn the fan as a safety, if you will, um, and, and turn the heat on. If I want uh, to test cooling, I can do that by testing the cooling. It'll cycle all the cooling stages on and off, and you'll be able to see if we had live sensors hooked up, which right now I don't have live sensors hooked up. Uh, but if I did, you'd be able to see the discharge air change as, as it was going through its cycling. So you can test, the, test any of the inputs and outputs as you see fit. You can also uh, open up the uh, valves or the, uh, uh, <coughs> pardon me, the dampers as well. So, for example, if I want to open up the economizer damper fully, I can go up to 100%. I can check to make sure that I'm under control of that and leave that open as long as I need to. So this is a great tool to be using during the commissioning process, especially, or doing any kind of type of troubleshooting or testing. So once I've completed that, I just exit the test mode, and that automatically puts the thermostat back into its standard control logic. Okay, and the next thing we're going to look at is the internal BACnet Explorer. Uh, so as you can see with this, we've built in a BACnet Explorer into all the ubiquistats, which discovers all of the BACnet objects uh, on the thermostat. So when you, if you put this, for example, on our system or a Niagara system or something of that, these are all the BACnet objects you discover. So you can see there's 248 BACnet objects on this particular thermostat. Um, and if it has an edit button, that means that you can change that. So all of the BACnet uh, points that we have are commandable, uh, they're discoverable, they're very well described. We really did back, what we call BACnet to the core with the ubiquistat. Uh, so for example, let's, let's look at a, at, at a function. Uh, if, we, uh, if we want to change, for example, we're going to go to uh, right here to the user set point limit. So if we want to uh, change that so that we're only giving 
uh, our users a couple of degrees to play with as far as raising or lowering the uh, set points. We can do it right there. We'll give them two degrees. We save that. Now, uh, let's say that I want to change this uh, a little more. So right now, the default says that it's going to hold that change until the next schedule comes along. But if I want to, I can change that from hold to timer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, change it to timer, and then we go to the next screen and we say, okay, how long do we want that to last? In this case, we're going to go 120 minutes or two hours. So what will happen now is if the user goes and raises or lowers a set point on the thermostat itself, it will just stay that way for two hours and then go back to its standard set points. All right, so that's the basics of the Ubiquistat. Uh, there's a lot more features and functions that we can do on uh, the BACnet Explorer. And if you want to have get more information on that, please contact us uh, for a further demonstration and one of our sales executives will be, be happy to help you out. Thanks a lot.